This is the story of how a toilet sunk a submarine. And for anyone expecting something like a boy's own adventure, then please now prepare for a disappointment by the time you get to the end. This story starts here at the Gdansk shipyard in Poland. It's a great place to visit, provided, of course, that you like almost abandoned industrial architecture. I do, because it's full of history. The Gdansk shipyard was one of the 12 locations where the German Type 7C submarine was built. One of these submarines built here was the U-1206, the fate of which is the subject of this presentation. The Type 7 submarine was by far the most built submarine and the most successful type of submarine in the history of naval warfare. It was 67.1 meters long with a pressure hull measuring 50.5 meters. Its outer width was 6.2 meters and the pressure hull was 4.7 meters. It could reach a surface speed of 17.6 knots and underwater 7.6 knots. Its range could take it 12,000 kilometers at 12 knots or it could travel for 150 kilometers at 4 knots underwater. It was designed to dive to 100 meters, although tested. It went to 165 meters and engineers at the time thought it could reach 250 meters before imploding on itself, although recent tests suggest that the submarine could have reached at least 280 meters. The U-1206 was equipped with five 53.3 centimeter torpedo tubes, four at the bow and one at the stern, and 14 torpedoes. It also had an 88 millimeter SK C-35 gun with 220 rounds of ammunition and anti-aircraft weapons. The crew strength of the submarine was 44 to 60 men. On its last trip, there were 50 men on board. Initially, the U-1206 served as a training boat under the command of Lieutenant Gunther Fritze in the 8th U Flotilla. In July 1944, the U-boat was assigned to the 11th U Flotilla and placed under the command of Captain Lieutenant Karl Adolf Schlitt, which is a rather unfortunate name given the subject of this video. Karl Adolf Schlitt was born on the 16th of April 1918 in Laboy on the Baltic at the mouth of the Kieler Forde, a 17 kilometre long inlet that leads to Kiel. We get a pretty good idea what it looks like from this map. Kiel has a strong naval tradition, especially after the construction of the Kiel Canal at the beginning of the 20th century, which allowed German shipping to pass from the North Sea to the Baltic, avoiding the complicated passage through Danish waters. Today in Laboy, one can visit the Technical Museum and see the U-995, which is on display, as well as the Memorial to Maritime Losses. The U-1206 was the first command of Captain Lieutenant Karl Adolf Schlitt. The U-1206 had a snorkel fitted. The snorkel was an invention of the Netherlands Navy, but following the occupation of that country, it fell into the hands of Nazi Germany. Initially, the Germans couldn't see the point. They thought of it as a way of getting fresh air into the submarine, which no doubt would have been very welcome, but the main use is of permitting the diesel engines to continue to run whilst the submarine was submerged. The Germans had captured three submarines from the Netherlands Navy, the UD-3, the UD-4 and the UD-5, but they had their snorkels removed in 1941. It was not just the German Navy that couldn't see the point, the Royal Navy also couldn't see the point, and they also removed the snorkels from the Dutch boats that escaped from the German invasion. However, with U-boat losses mounting and with the advantage of staying underwater very clear, the German Navy had a rethink. New submarines, the 21 and 23 types, were manufactured with a snorkel whilst it was retrofitted to those of the 7C and 9C classes such as the U-1206. Work, however, was very slow, even when the U-1206 got its snorkel, still around half of the U-boat fleet lacked this device. However, there were problems with the snorkel. 
When in use, the submarine could manage a maximum of six knots. Like all chimneys and ducts, they could get blocked. And in this case, the engines would suck air from the inside of the submarine. And there was also the problem of how to dispose waste, particularly toilet waste, when the vessel was submerged. On the 28th of March 1945, the submarine left Kiel for the naval base on the Karl Johansson Peninsula, north of Horten in Norway, where it arrived on the 30th of March 1945. It left on the 2nd of April 1945 and went to the Norwegian port of Kristiansand, where it arrived the following day. It left Kristiansand on the 6th of April 1945 to take up a patrol position off the coast of the northeastern part of the United Kingdom in the North Sea. For a few days, the boat sailed off the British coast without encountering any enemy ships. Thanks to the snorkel, the submarine remained hidden at a depth of 60 meters. On the 9th of April 1945, technical problems occurred with the compressor of the starboard diesel engine. On the 13th of April 1945, the starboard diesel engine failed completely and mechanics attempted to restart the engine, allowing a merchant ship of around 8,000 GRT to pass by unharmed. This now brings me to the subject of the toilet on the U-1206. While the Allies collected the feces in, in their submarines in separate tanks, the conventional German submarine collected feces and urine in containers that were emptied to the sea whilst on the surface of the water. There is a major advantage to the German system in both weight and not having to carry a pile of excrement around, but on the other hand, this led to considerable stress during longer underwater trips, which were becoming increasingly necessary in view of Allied air superiority. The high pressure at great water depths made it impossible to eject the feces at ordinary pressures. With the new Type 7 submarines, the problem was solved by what might be termed a high-pressure toilet. However, the operation was very complicated. That is why there was a sailor on each submarine who had been specially trained in the technology. The wastewater was fed through valves through a series of chambers until it ended up in a compressed airlock. From here, it was shot out into the sea with highly compressed air in a sort of toilet torpedo. I'm sure you can make up some good jokes and stick them in the comment section. On the 14th of April 1945, Lieutenant Captain Schlitt needed to use the toilet. He must have done something wrong, as instead of his waste matter going down into the toilet, it came up at him at high pressure mixed with seawater. It would appear that the outside valve either failed to work or was not engaged. The toilet specialist was called and Schlitt went to the engine room in order to help get the faulty diesel engine started. However, the toilet engineer was no longer able to close the toilet locks. When the seawater reached the batteries located under the toilet, toxic chlorine gas formed. In this situation, with the risk of everybody on board being suffocated, Schlitt ordered the submarine to surface as quickly as possible and for fresh air to be pumped in. For this purpose, all torpedoes located in the launch tubes had to be ejected. On reaching the surface, the submarine had the very bad luck to be spotted by the Royal Air Force and it was attacked. Schlitt ordered the U-boat to scuttle itself and ordered everyone to make for the coast in dinghies. One man was killed in the air attack. Three, Hans Birkauer, Karl Corrin and Emil Cooper, drowned. Eight seamen reached shore. 23 were rescued on board the British Navy trawler HMT Nozu. Nine were pulled out of the water by the British sloop Nonsuch and 14 were saved by a fishing boat. Some were taken to Aberdeen as prisoners of war, others ended up at Peterhead Police Station and the next day were taken by train to London for questioning. A total of 46 sailors from the U-1206 were taken prisoner. Schlitt remained a British prisoner of war until 1948. 
According to Schlitt, the submarine sank at 52 degrees 24 minutes north, 1 degree 37 minutes west. The submarine, however, was not located until BP was doing some exploration work for the Fortis Field oil pipeline to Cruden Bay in Aberdeenshire. The wreck of U2106 was found at 57 degrees 21 minutes north, 1 degree 39 minutes west, about 12 nautical miles off Cruden Bay at a depth of around 70 metres. In 2012, divers from Book and Shipwrecks visited the wreck of U1206. They found the U-boat to be in relatively good condition and contrary to the captain's 1945 report, one of the torpedo tubes was still loaded. At this moment, the real story of why the submarine sank came to light. Captain Schlitt died in 2009, aged 90. Years earlier, he had told his son what had really happened. By the middle of April 1945, the Red Army was almost in Berlin and 80% of all U-boat crews were dead. The responsibility of Captain Schlitt was to his crew and not to the dictator who had sent them off to risk their lives pursuing his ideas of greatness. The officers had decided to surrender. They invented the leak as a cover-up to protect themselves from the reprisals they might have faced in the POW camp if the truth had come out. As deserters, they might have had to fear for their safety amongst other prisoners. And, as you may have heard in my video on that subject, the Canadian Army allowed German POWs to shoot German deserters in May 1945. Captain Schlitt did his duty to his crew members, and although three of the men were killed before they could reach shore, and one in an air attack that he could not prevent, the others did survive. Therefore, the story of the toilet that sunk a U-boat is a myth, but has not stopped plenty of other people from repeating it as though it were true. I hope you found that interesting. The first time I actually came across this story, I thought there was something fishy about it, but not knowing anything about the toilet technology, I accepted it at face value until I started to look at it in more depth. And this is the, um, this is the result, and there's a little joke in more depth. I hope you found that interesting. I do find these sort of these stories which seem a bit far fetched interesting. I try to look at them in more more detail uh, when I can. And if you're interested in this sort of thing, then you might want to subscribe. I upload every Friday at twenty hundred hours. That's my time in Central Europe. That's seven o'clock in the UK and all sorts of different times in other places as well. So if you press the subscribe button and ring the bell, ding ding, then you'll know when I'm uploading. Thanks very much for being here.